Hi, this is No Debutante. I'm here today with Corinne from Rare Beauty. Um, Corinne, if you'd like to tell everyone about the range. Sure. Rare Beauty is a woman-led natural beauty store. We are mainly online, but we're doing a range of pop-ups around Bristol later this year. Um, the reason why we're woman-led are two areas. One is that all the products that we sell on the store are made by um, women skincare entrepreneurs from the UK. So they uh, hand make their own skincare and um, they adhere to ethical standards that we look for. Um, and secondly, we're women led because uh, we like to involve uh, women in the honest reviews of the products that we sell. So we've got a group of women who uh, provide their trusted feedback on each product that you can read alongside the product description. So we thought it would be nice to involve Emma in that process as well. Mm -hmm. So I've um, given Emma a few products to trial over the last couple of weeks. So we've given her the, um, this is a sample size by the way, the, the full size be bigger. This is a daily revive moisturizer made by Bloom Remedies, who are a skincare brand that hand make their organic beauty products in Cornwall. Uh, this moisturizer is designed for dry and mature skin. So how did you get on with that? <laughs> so, I was surprised by the just the skin. What? Well, you no. chose no. that. <laughs> I did. Uh, so basically, I really like this product. Um, one, because I already use um, a Dr. Hershger project, yeah. um, product that is it's kind of rose-scented. And I kind of like um, a moisturizer to be kind of quite uh, oily and quite... I, I don't want it to be too watery and light. I actually quite like it to be um, kind of thick and you can feel it going in and feel it working. Mm -hmm. um, this is really nice. It's slightly lighter actually than the Dr. Hajda one, mm -hmm. um, but it, it smells gorgeous. And um, it actually, yeah, it's much lighter than the Dr. Hajda one, but still kind of, it, it just feels like the same sort of product to me. And it's been, mm -hmm. it, I've got quite sensitive skin I've got some oily patches and some very dry, like eczema oily kind of um, mm. patches on my face and neck. And so, um, yeah, this is really great for me. And also I can tell straight away if something is, I'm going to be allergic to it. So, um, yeah, it's okay. really great. And, and I've been using yeah. it every day. And there shouldn't be anything in, in that that would irritate you because all of the products that we stock are uh, made with m predominantly plant-based ingredients. So... Um, butters, oils, mm. as close to the sort of natural source yeah. that you can find. So you shouldn't find that you have a, a reaction to to any of the products. But um, that sounds like a good one for summer if it was a bit lighter for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. I mean, it's great. And I, I can smell it on my face yeah. when I put it on and yeah. stuff, so that's really nice. Well, Marie, the founder of Bloom Remedies, she's actually a qualified aromatherapist. So she brings that mm. knowledge into her skincare. And yeah. that's what I like about all the... The skincare brands that we represent is um, each woman have got their own uh, skill and expertise and knowledge that they bring to their brands and their own passion. Sure. Um, so Mallow and White, for example, is um, produced by Jo, um, and Jo's a real fan, a real fan of pure and simple skincare. So she doesn't make her products with any more than six natural ingredients in them. So um, if you're looking for purity. Um, then the Mellow and White would be would be a good one to try. So you tried the cleansing oil. Now some people yeah. haven't used an oil-based product before, so how did you get no. on with it? I mean, I've used before, I've used kind of oil, kind of blobbed in some water, some warm yeah. water and washed my face with that. And actually I really like doing that because yeah. um, it, it's just, you, your face feels really clean, but also moisturized. Yes. Um, but previous well that I was doing that before but then recently I've been really lazy and I've been using like face wipes mm. um that do they bring out my eczema in my yeah. face so actually yeah. I only try and use it on my eyes because I've actually got really sensitive eyes as yeah. well um so um I don't wear that much base makeup yeah. anyway but I do wear uh, mascara in fact one of the best ways to use a cleansing oil is to get your skin damp yeah. and then a few drops on your fingertips and then oh, okay. massage it all over your mm. face so when i use this i use this most nights 
is cleansing oil. I, I give, I, I work the oil into my, into my skin, into my pores and all around my eye area. Um, and then I'll use a hot cloth flannel or, or, or a muslin to, to then um, buff yeah. the, the oil yeah. away. Um, and the reason why that will work better is because um, most people don't realize, but oil breaks down oil. Mm. So um, the cleansing oils that are created by our, our female uh, skincare brands, they've chosen the oils to work naturally with your skin sebum and mm. to help control the oil production. So yeah. it's a kind of myth where you think, well, I don't want to put oil on my face because my face is oily, particularly days like today when it's hot yeah, and sweaty. Sure. But actually, the oil in the product will break down your, your natural oil, but it will keep it nicely balanced. Mm. So um, next time you use it tonight, really try and give yourself a bit of a mini facial, a facial okay. while you're um, while you're using the product, um, and then you should find that um, it will help to rebalance the um, mm. your dry patches as well. Okay. Um, and you don't need to um, wash it off with a soap-based product afterwards. The idea is oh, that no, you leave yeah. it um, leave it to sink in. Um, overnight as well and I think the great thing about it is when you wake up in the morning your face feels really soft yeah because I've heard before that you shouldn't maybe use that many products at night I haven't been using for quite a few years um, any creams on my face before I go to bed mm -hmm. because I've heard that um, the your natural oils work more at night and but I've, I've found so I don't actually use anything but I found if you use this before then it's much better than just ramming mm -hmm. loads of creams and stuff on your face. Because actually, when I was using those, mm. it was making my face worse. Yeah, um, yeah. In fact, one of the sort of skincare tips I was going to share with you today was was about what you do at night time. Mm. Um, and um, I'm a massive fan of using face oils overnight, but not necessarily a cream yeah. based yeah, product, an oil, yeah. but an oil because it works <coughs> with your skin's mm. um, natural. Um, oils and what it will help to do um, is it will help to regenerate the skin overnight so I've been noticing my skin's got very dry in this hot weather or in the winter time it gets dry because yeah. of the wind and the rain and things like that and um, when when I put the face oil on overnight um, it just smooths everything out in the morning and you wake up with a kind of really fresh complexion yeah, and it's about finding the right product for your skin um, and I think that's what we try and do on Rare Beauty with our product reviews. And we've got, you know, search functions so you can look at your own skin type mm. and then choose Great. the product that works. So yeah. with face oils, it's about finding the, the, the right oil. Um, so if you've got a slightly oily, oilier complexion, you need a very light oil, a drier oil, uh, something like apricot, which is very light mm. and, um, and, and still nourishing. Or if you've got quite dry skin, then you might be able to get away with a slightly heavy oil like macadamia nut, which is a right. got a heavier consistency, but it's great for drier and maturer skin. So it's just about experimenting really and finding out what works for you. So great, yeah. But yeah, I really I really like this product, and just the fact that I can kind of feel it on my face. <laughs> but it's not in a horrible way, you know. It's kind mm. of like a natural way, like it's mm. it just doesn't feel like it's thick with oil. It really just no. feels natural. And yeah, I think it's a myth. Uh, I think until you've tried an oil-based product, um, you don't really know w what it actually feels like. But it's much lighter and more nourishing than you'd expect. Mm. Most agree. most good face oil products or cleansing oil products will will not leave a, a greasy residue, it, maybe for a minute or so, just while it's sinking in, mm. and then it's doing its job, yeah. so. Um, great, great. Okay. Too, I'm just noticing you've got really nice skin. Oh, thank you, yeah. <laughs> just from yeah. using the product. So yeah, I, I do, yeah. I use, all the pro I use a lot of the products, and I'm just finding the ones that, that suit my, my skin yeah. type, really. Sure. Um, but I have been using a face oil um, over the last week, uh, every night. Yeah. Um, and I've really noticed the difference in the morning of, of not just having having those um, dried out patches that you get in sure. the summertime. So, so it is worth trying to find the correct beauty treatment yes. for you yeah. and then in the end, in the long run. Yeah, I think. and these products um, that we've got here, these three, um, four actually, they're, they're all um, sample size. So what we do have on the site are lots of um, sample size kits that you can actually um, okay. try yeah. the products um, 
to see if they suit your skin before you invest in the full size. Sure. So and I would say like things like this last ages that will last you most of the summer yeah yeah, yeah. it will last me ages yeah. and i know it will yeah um and this one is just lasting ages because it literally is just a couple of drops and yes so yeah yeah they're, they're generous size um samples they're not teeny tiny mm. so um we're, we're just starting now to have customers coming back and buy the full size yeah. product sure but they've they've had it for a good couple of months before they need to do that at least so. yeah Corinne, you've bought a few products with you today. I understand this is your bestseller. Yes, um, the the Naking uh, brand is is our best-selling brand. Um, they're a natural um, anti-aging skincare brand, so they're pretty innovative. They've got some natural active ingredients um, in their products, which are proven to have sort of anti-aging properties. One of them being hyaluronic acid which sounds scary, but actually hyaluronic yes. acid is um, produced naturally within our, our skin. Um, but as we get older, we produce less of it. Mm. And it's essentially the sort of super moisturizer for your skin. So your skin will really need it as you get older. Uh, but it's also a very popular brand with, with younger people as well. My, my niece uses this toner. Um, one of our residents has reviewed a couple of their products and she's in her 20s. So. Um, it's it's a great uh, good value uh, introduction to natural skincare if you've not tried any products before sure. um, and I can see why this toner is so popular it's um, purifying face toner it's got a lovely natural color to it there's no no coloring in there at all uh, it's got aloe vera and witch hazel it's got hyaluronic acid and it's very gentle on the skin so it's perfect if you need a bit of rebalancing or if you're looking to take away the final traces of makeup after cleansing. Okay, how would you apply it? Um, I apply it using a, um, uh, a, cotton, a cotton pad and I actually use um, a natural cotton pad as opposed to cotton wool because I think that's okay. nicer for your skin mm -hmm. um, and better for the environment. Sure. So I use a natural cotton pad after cleansing and I, I sweep it over my face and then I would put on my face oil or Ooh. serum afterwards okay. um, or moisturiser if, if it was in the morning. Sure. So, okay. yeah. so that's popular. And then also I want to tell you about the um, cactus fruit eye serum. This has been hugely popular and I can see why because it's, it's actually a really handy little serum to to use just before you go to bed for best results to use it before bed because it's just got this really cute little roller ball oh. so it's really really easy to use to play with yeah it it's really easy to use on your eyes so you literally just roll it under and give it a little yes ribbon. exactly yes yeah, so you could roll it directly onto your eyes or you could use your finger Probably should be putting it on that. had it around your eye area um, this is a, an oil-based serum, but it's a very mm. light oil. It's a, a mixture of uh, superfood oils. So it's got prickly pear, it's got, um, which is cactus fruit. It's, it's got camellia, white poppy seed, and a, a range of, um, of oils that are designed to brighten and smooth sure. and, to, and tone the eye area, but in a, in a very gentle, natural way. And we've, we've had reports of excellent results, so. I'm going to give that one yeah, a try. Yeah, give that one a try. I've done a one eye, not the other. Yeah. So let's see what happens. <laughs> um, I was going to say, um, because I'm um, a big promoter of ethical fashion and ethical living and sustainable living. And so it's really great that Rare Beauty focus on this. Mm -hmm. um, so how did you find um, the companies um, that are, are all of the companies sustainable in one way or another that you're yeah, more ethical? Yeah, absolutely. All, all the, the skincare brands that we sell and store are um, founded by women, uh, women who create their own, their own skincare products using the highest quality natural ingredients they can find. Mm -hmm. They're all cruelty free, so they never test on animals or they never buy ingredients that are tested on animals. A lot of them use organic um, products in their um, in their formulations they are all very conscious about their impact on the environment so when we assess a brand we find out about their approach to packaging to um, how they ship their products mm -hmm. uh, to ev everything really about how they're sustainable as a brand and um, they're all very passionate about that 
um, as well and very much looking to reduce the, the packaging that they use um, or switch to sustainable packaging. So Brilliant. about 80% of the products that we sell on the store are contained in recyclable packaging, which is often glass. Yeah. Um, so we really try and minimize plastic. Sure. Um, and that's something that we will continue into the future with uh, zero waste products like soap ranges sure. that, um, that don't require any or minimal packaging as well. I think um, it's still quite a big thing that people mm -hmm. don't realise that, yes, plastic mm -hmm. is recyclable, um, but actually black plastic isn't recyclable, yeah. so that's one problem. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it's recyclable up to a certain amount, and then a lot of it just goes to waste, which is how it ends up in, in the land and the sea. And, mm -hmm. you know, so glass is so much better mm -hmm. um, for the environment and cardboard and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so I think there's still quite a low opinion on getting rid of plastics with a lot of people because they still don't, they still see it as a recyclable product. Mm. So it's really great that things are now moving on with the beauty industry as well. And also a lot of the people, the um, makers of these products, they, they test a lot of the items themselves, I guess, because they're, if they're making them at home and things like that. Yeah, they, they test them on, on family and friends and willing testers, but every, every product that um, a skincare business in the UK um, sells, they have to go through cosmetic testing, okay. just like the big brands. Yeah. So they, they all have a, um, a document called a CPSR for every single product yeah. that they make, which you can ask to see. And um, that, that gives confidence that, that what, what they're creating are safe um, and using the correct ingredients in the correct amounts as well. Sure. Um, and often, in my view anyway, a lot more thought, care and attention has gone into these products than a lot of the products you find on the high street sure. um, that are often created kind of several steps removed from the consumer. Mm. Um, and the top eight global beauty businesses in the world are, are led by men and their leadership teams are full, of, are full of men as well. And that is actually an issue in the beauty industry that you wouldn't realize. Yeah. But um, there's a lack of female leadership in the beauty industry, which seems crazy when you think about the fact that it's women that mainly buy products. That use the products. Yes, I know. I mean, this leads me on to what I was going to say next, actually, mm. about promoting and empowering women into the industry um, with all industries, um, especially things like fashion, beauty, mm. tech, uh, music, ed mm. every industry um, at the moment, it, we're having a big push to get more yeah. women um, notice the more women um, interested in these roles mm -hmm. um, so how did you become um, interested one in the beauty side yeah. of things and then what made you then go on to um, only have women yeah um, uh, making ranges for the yeah. rare beauty range well, I, I got a book about six or seven years ago, um, which was all about making your own natural skincare products. And I was quite shocked when I read the foreword of the book, which talked about the ingredients that are used in mainstream beauty products um, and how toxic they are and how laden with chemicals they are. And I felt quite duped actually, because yeah. I was one of those people that was going to boots and buying Sure. the big big brands thinking that they were good for my skin when in fact they're the opposite. So I started making my own skincare products, um, experimenting with, with oils and butter blends and things like that, making them for family and friends. Um, and everybody that I talked to about it and everyone that I shared the products with were, were real converts to, 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 the, to nat more natural appro approach to beauty. And then um, a couple of years ago, I was in a sales and marketing role and that's been um, my career really, my profession in sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. And I started to research into the natural beauty um, industry which is uh, growing at a huge rate at the moment. It's, um, it's really booming and in fact it's, it's now competing on a level with, with some of the larger skincare businesses in wow. terms of um, how interested people are and how many people are switching their skincare mm -hmm. from from the high street brands to the brands that we see here today. Um, and as I started to research all the skincare brands that were out there in the UK, I couldn't realize how, I couldn't believe how many beautiful products there were already that were for sale, the products that these women make. 
um, and others. And so it got me thinking about, well, if I'm not finding them, then maybe other people aren't. Sure. So if I can create a platform, um, an umbrella brand, if you like, Rare Beauty's the kind of, um, the, the, you know, the holding brand for these beautiful um, skincare businesses, then I'll be able to to get more customers to come and find um, and find the yeah. skincare that's right for them, rather than having to go and find each business on an individual basis, which can be quite difficult sure. um, on on the internet now. There's so much out there. I'd agree. I yeah. mean, if I'm ever looking for a product, I would look on. I don't know too much about beauty products, but I know what I like when mm. I find it. Um, and if you Google. Um, a beauty product. Um, I wasn't. I would be honest. I wasn't necessarily um, looking for ethical products. It was just anything mm. to help with skincare issues mm. and mm. makeup and mm. what's the best mascara to use and things like that. Um, and the first things that always come up are things like Cosmos top ten yeah. Um, yeah. products, which yeah. working in from in magazines and publishing like I have done for mm. years, I know for a fact that all of those companies have paid to be yeah. at the top of that list. Um, yeah. So no one in Cosmo, well, they may have used it because they're getting it, probably getting a few samples for free, but they will just promote, it's not just Cosmo, but it, yeah. <laughs> you know, not just against Cosmopolitan or any magazine. It literally, that this is how it works. And mm -hmm. so these are fake products. They, they really, they are beauty products, but you know, they, they're at the top of that list for a reason. They've bought their way there. Mm. Um, and so could you let us know what's the best way, obviously to go onto the Rare Beauty website is one of them. Yes. Um, but the best way to search for um, ethical beauty products. Yeah. In fact, I would, I would recommend um, Facebook as a really excellent resource mm. because what you've got on Facebook is a range of um, communities um, so there's the Natural Beauty UK group on Facebook, which um, is, is full of um, members of the group who share re their recommendations for ethical beauty products. Okay. Um, you've got uh, vegan beauty groups, you've got cruelty free beauty groups, and um, it's a really nice way of finding out what other people are using and buying, and you will discover some of these lesser known skincare mm. brands as a result of and that. I guess people are being more honest on Facebook. They are more honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's working, what isn't working. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So and that's, that's kind of how you work as well, because you have um, testers, real yes. life people, testers, yeah. Yeah. Um, who yeah. are honest and yes. yeah. just let you know how they got on with the product. Yeah. So what we do is we give um, every product to a woman who um, trials it over a number of weeks. Um, and then writes her honest experience of, of how she got on with the product. So some of them are, are very brutally honest um, and say, you know, this eye cream is not for me. I don't use eye cream and I didn't really like it, but I gave it to a friend who tried it and mm -hmm. they and they actually said this about it. So so we, we ask for um, real honest, trusted reviews because we think that's what people look for Definitely. when when they try and find a beauty product. And, and it's about finding the right product for you it's not about um, being persuaded to buy something that isn't right for your sure. for your skin or for your preferences. And everyone's got their own preferences when it comes to skincare. Definitely. So what we've tried to do is pull together a range that will speak to um, as many different um, people as possible in terms of what they like. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, okay. So um, it, we're in the middle of the summer as we're filming this, but we are, <laughs> autumn is approaching. Yes. Well, not so quickly, but yeah. you know. Um, so what's gonna ha what's new with uh, Rare Beauty um, in the autumn months? So in the autumn, we've got some exciting things happening. We are going to be uh, launching a, a skincare guide, uh, which is all about um, winter and seasonal skin and how to manage it over the over the winter months because. Our skin takes, tends to take a bit of a battering yeah. when that weather changes. So we're going to be doing that. You'll be able to download that from our website for free or get a paper copy. Um, we are also going to be doing some beauty boxes. So these will be perfect for, uh, for gifts, but also mm -hmm. for yourself. If you want to try a range of, of our products, we'll be having um, different themed boxes. So I'm thinking okay. about you know a vegan one, um, a, um, a kind of eco looks one, um, uh, a face care, mm, a face care yeah, box, sure. a body care box. So, um, 
a, a box that you can buy and and try a load and of everything's in there that you need for your your beauty um, yes uh, what, your beauty regime, regime. Yeah. regime. Yeah. yes yeah. and would make a lovely gift so we're going to be doing those um, we are going to be doing some pop-ups over the autumn um, in collaboration with a few shops in Bristol yeah. that also champion um, artisan um, artisan clothes or, or um, uh, artist makers, one of them being Casper in Southville. Yeah, lots of exciting things happening over the autumn time. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for joining me today, Thank you. Corinne. Um, we will we have to do this again and test some more products. That would be great. And, yeah. um, but in the meantime, if you um, look up Rare Beauty, the website is? Is um, rare-beauty.co.uk. Um, at Rare Beauty Co. for any of our social feeds. Excellent. Yeah. And also look out for the pop-ups and yeah. also these beauty boxes, which I'm intrigued by. Mm. I do kind of like being told what to do mm. when it comes mm. to beauty. It's yeah. like, what am I doing? Okay, <laughs> I'm doing this. Right, yeah. I've got it. Because yeah. I've... I find that my, my life is pretty hectic, I've got three children, mm. lots going on. Yeah, um, I think they'll go down very well. Yeah, yeah, so that sort of thing I find really helpful. Yeah. <laughs> so I should look forward to using one of those. Okay. Okay, thanks for coming. Thanks, Emma. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.